So I'd like to open up the uh, TARC meeting uh, for September 16th uh, at it's 401. Um, first of all, I'd like the um, the committee to introduce themselves, but I'll, I'll start. I'm Alex David. I'm the chairperson of the committee. Richard Strime. Hello. Debbie Swain, vice chair. Hey, Debbie. Hey. Steve. Steve. Did you hear me, Steve Pina? Yep. Roy Danziger. Hey, Roy. Hi. And Anab? Hey. Anab, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. So we have six six members present. So we do have a, a quorum. Is that correct, Oscar? Yes. Okay. Um, could could we uh, hear from anyone uh, any other anyone else on on the Zoom meeting um, to introduce yourselves? Oscar Camejo, TARC coordinator. Thank you. Sandra Bayo with the Golden Glades Multimodal Transportation Facility representative. Okay, great. Thank you. This is Alexander Gorgas with DTPW for the Dayland South Intermodal Project. Okay, thanks. This is Anna Race, and I'm here with Lincoln Rodon and Luis Tejada for the Dayland South Intermodal Project. Okay. With, or with AECOM. Oh, AECOM. Okay, thank you. And this is Michael Kerwin. I'm also, um, I'm also with uh, AECOM on the, on, the, uh, on the Dayland South Project. Okay, great. Did we get everyone? Isabel Padron with DTPW for the South Corridor Project, they then project. Okay. Good afternoon, and this is Elia Nunez with DTPW, um, also for the Dayland South Project. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so hearing that no one else is, um, on, on in the Zoom or on the Zoom meeting, um, I'd like to um, open open this up. We've done the introductions. Um, has everyone reviewed the agenda? And uh, are there any uh, changes to this agenda? Move the agenda. Debbie, you move the agenda. I need a second. I'll second. Who seconded? Or okay, so we have a motion and second. And second, all in favor of the uh, approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, has everyone reviewed uh, the uh, uh, minutes uh, from the last meeting on June 29th? And have, uh, do you have any changes? Great, there I'm, they are. I move the minutes. Okay, Debbie. I need a second. I'll second again. Okay, Richard, thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes from July 29th, say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, uh, Roman numeral two, which is our action items. And we just have one action item for today. And that's going to be um, the Dayland South Intermodal Project, which is the connection from the existing Dayland to the uh, South Dade uh, Transitway Corridor, Bus Rapid Transit. Um, so who's going to, is it Alexander, are you going to start? Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a brief introduction and, and then we're going to have our consultant actually do the presentation for you guys. Okay. So uh, again, thank you very much. Again, yeah, this is the Dayland South Intermodal Project. Uh, this is our, our end terminal for the South Corridor Project, which is the BRT uh, uh, buses. Um, so basically where we're at right now, um, Dayland South is going to be a design-build contract. 
Um, right now, we're, we're currently working with ACOM to prepare the design criteria package. We are uh, very close to finalizing the uh, design criteria package, which again, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a conceptual um, um, plan to give to the actual design build firm for them to start the uh, actual design as well as the construction. So we're, we're looking at like at a 30% more or less uh, set of conceptual plans with, uh, with all the design criteria needed for the project. Um, right now we're looking at an advertisement date. Again, uh, it's not set in stone, but we're looking more or less like next month, uh, October, 2021. Um, with that, I will, I will now let ACOM actually do the presentation of the Dayland South Intermodal Project. Okay, so, uh, uh, Anna Lewis. Yes. Um, yes. The name of the committee is actually the Transportation Aesthetics Review Committee, not technical. Okay. So, yes, yes, this will be, a, a, it'll be, no, no, sorry about that, not a problem. <laughs> no problem, I'll just keep... to, you know, point that out. So, okay. Right, we'll hear from me, Tom. Yep, absolutely. Um, is there any way that I can, this is Anna Race, um, is there any way that I can control the screen or should I just um, say? You just need to say next slide. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so we kind of put together a brief agenda. However, I think we already tackled some of these items um, previously in the meeting. So if we go to the next slide, we can just skip over the introductions since we already did that. And yep, and then as Alex had indicated, um, this is a project and we are um, undergoing the final stages of developing the design criteria package, which is going to be a narrative document which stipulates all of the technical requirements as well as a group of attachments which are tech, um, contractually binding documents and reference documents which are there for the design builds reference and informational purposes only. Um, also the project is to be funded solely by the county's PTP funds. Um, if you could go to the next slide that'd be great. Thanks. Um. I, don't, I mean, just want to know based on, on the information, uh, since Alex mentioned this, that uh, advertising is going to be moved to uh, mid October. I think the, the days that we have right there was from the previous uh, presentation. So, um, uh, as you can see, the duration of the project more or less is going to be approximately two years. Um, um, it's going to take um, to the substantial completion when we have the revenue service, and after that will be the final assessment. assessment. Uh, reference I think definitely we have that day correct. It's not going to be early uh, October 2021. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, and this slide that we see right here is that uh, we have um, the different items that are going to be part of the scope. Um, we have uh, the, um, the elevated bus rapid transit platform, uh, the BRT platform canopies, the different canopies that we're proposing uh, for. Um, ways uh, for vertical circulation that the north entrance. I, I think if, if we go to the next slide, it's going to be easy to, to show uh, all the items that were uh, presented for this. Um, as you can see, um, you have in the middle the existing metro rail station. Um, that's the station is, uh, is going to be um, the BRT, the, the bus rapid transit platform is going to be uh, installed or uh, on the on the west, on the east side, on the on the east side of the existing metro rail station, and it's going to be going over Dayton Drive that you can see uh, on the left side. That's the street that's going to be go going over. The actual entrance for um, the the bus, bus rapid transit platform will be to Dayton Boulevard that you see on the right side. So it's going to the entrance is going to be right there going. Uh, to the second level, uh, parallel. I mean, it's going to be at the same level though that existing metro rail station, and uh, just going south uh, into the transit way. Um, we're going to be providing a, a crossing that's going to be from the uh, the platform for the for the buses uh, and connecting uh, to the existing metro rail uh, platform uh, for pedestrians to to do an easy transfer from the bus rapid transit to the metro rail. Um, on, the, on the right side, on, on red, um, that's going to be um, the, the metro rail um, canopy state extension that we're gonna, is going to be installed as part of this project also. And uh, we have another one that we don't see on the screen right now. 
that's going to be over going over the uh, escalator as well as the um, the park and ride sex section. Um, we also going to be installed um, a canopy, as you can see in purple, is the 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 bus rapid platform canopy. It's going to be going over the bus uh, platform as well as a portion of the uh, metro rails uh, track lines that you see right there. Um, I think in reference to that, um, maybe Lincoln or Mike information about the the canopy, the big BR, BRT platform canopy. You can go to the next slide. Yeah. Mike, are you on? See on you. I have to, I'm sorry, I have to unmute myself. I apologize for that. If we could go back one slide, I just want to point out that that, that uh, canopy that you see in purple there that, that Luis was talking about uh, covers the uh, pedestrian portion of the platform for the BRT as well as the connection, uh, which is uh, slightly ramped back to the existing Metro Rail station. So uh, a rider can go uh, undercover from uh, anywhere in the Metro Rail station access the new BRT platform from the existing Metro Rail station and, and then be undercover protected from sun and rain uh, for the entire experience. Uh, there's, a slight, there's a slight variation in elevation between the Metro Rail station and the, and the new BRT platform. Metro Rail station is a couple of feet higher, so we have a, a partly ramping uh, connection. You'll see that in, in, uh, in the images to, to come. So next slide. Um, to, to, do, to describe the, 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 uh, the, the canopy in very simple terms, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a very large floating uh, cloud. It's, it's developed around the notion that we had a, a programmatic requirement to, to protect the pedestrian at a 45 degree angle up and away from any, any portion of the platform where the, where the pedestrian is, is waiting or, or moving. So you see that number 12, uh, dash line to the right there. That's a 45 degree line out to out, up and out away from the, the pedestrian component of the BRT platform. To the right of that angled uh, uh, line is the is obviously is the bus component, the vehicular component. To the left of it is the is the uh, uh, pedestrian component. Uh, the volume to the left is a is a driver uh, station. It's a it's a it's a, a place where drivers can relax. A uh, small a small building that floats at the same level as the as the BRT platform and and just slightly below the the Metro platform. The two trains that you see there, but those are both ex the existing tracks for Metro Rail. One of which acts as a trail track and comes and comes down and passes by the edge of the uh, the, the the BRT. This is a, a lightweight metal structure. It's um, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's it's it will be de designed as a uh, as a as a component that is smooth convex on the bottom, smooth convex on the top. It's about 14 feet deep at its high at its uh, at its deepest point. Uh, all of the the um, lighting for the station, mo I should say, most of the lighting for the station will come from the inside of that. Uh, canopy, that canopy section, the lighting will be provided to come through a polycarbonate surface that's on the bottom. You'll see in a section, in a second what I mean by that. Um, the, there will also be a system of ventilating uh, the uh, moving air uh, to uh, provide added comfort to the pedestrians from the bottom surface of that, uh, of that canopy as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll show you some images of the, of the uh, spot diffusers that, that achieve that, that, that goal. Uh, we have an independent structure that uh, is separate from the, any of the structure that has to do with the, the train tracks or the metro rail. Uh, and we have an independent structure from the, the structure that supports the BRT uh, platform itself. Uh, so the canopy and the, and the uh, drivers and the driver's uh, pavilion are both uh, on, uh, held up by their own, their own independent structure. So the movements and all of the loads and, and, and everything can be uh, can be achieved uh, independently and uh, according to the, the requirements of each, which are, you know, which are different. Uh, you'll see in a second, actually, let's go to the next slide, please. 
Um, this is a, this may not be large, uh, large enough for you to see very well. I hope you can see it on your screen, but what we've done here is to explode the, the various components of the, of the project. So uh, at the ground level of the existing Metro Rail station, which is again, still where uh, BRT riders and Metro riders will enter the, the system, that, that's gonna be fully remodeled. Anna's gonna talk about that more in, in detail in, in a moment. I'm, I'm thinking that my cursor is showing, but it's probably not, right? Um, no. uh, above that, above that, from the going, going from the bottom to the next element to the top, the ramp at the at the the north end on the east on the well, let's just say page east on the east end of the of the project and the ramp on the south end of the project go uh, distribute themselves outward and then the the platform itself in the middle where you see the two buses is where the pedestrians connect to the existing metro rail. Uh, station. There's a, there's room for four articulated buses moving independently of one another, and you have a sense there of the supports that will carry the canopy which floats above, and those supports that kind of look like trees there with the branches uh, floating upward. And so you see the space frame structure, the lightweight metal space frame structure floating above that, exploded above that, and then the the metal roof uh, on on top of that at the very at the very tip top. So it's a very very simple idea. Um, uh, it, it is it was uh, asked of us by DTPW to make this uh, you know represent the the real the real huge kind of transportation move forward that the south quarter project represents uh appropriately to be in the intermodal station here at the at the at the south end of metro rail and the very north end of the south quarter so it was an important an important arch architectural statement to be made what doesn't show in this in this image is that right immediately behind the project is a large is a is a high facade of the mixed use uh, office and garage uh, building uh, just immediately behind. So, so we had that to compete with in a, in, in a way, and um, got, kind of we're, act, we're asked to to create something that will be memorable in that in that context. So, next slide. So this is an early. This is a preliminary drawing, which just shows uh, it's 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 really not far from uh, from the final from the final product, but it's a it's a very conceptual drawing that shows. The ramp, as you see in in that period, with an arched an arched opening for for the Daytran Road to, to to pass below the new uh, BRT platform, and the and the uh, what we call the tree columns and the floating the floating uh, uh, canopy, which can uh, you know draw be a memory of a, of a leaf shape, uh, a surfboard shape. It has many resonances, we think, for, with, with, with a variety of different things. But you thing. see the the uh, the canopy uh, floating in front of that that high the high facades of the buildings to its uh, to its side. Uh, next, likewise, uh, one of the one of the places where the canopy is going to be the most apparent, the most visible is from Dixie Highway. So this is a view as though you were floating a little bit above Dixie Highway looking across at this, uh, at this what we hope is an elegant, simple, minimalist, but memorable form um, floating in front of those, those buildings behind. And you'll see in the next couple of slides after this that the bottom, the bottom half of that, of that leaf form is uh, totally translucent. And that's where the light, uh, the light for the project comes from, and the top is is of is symmetrical to it in section, but it's of a different material. It's of a, a flat seam aluminum roofing uh, material. Uh, next, here's what uh, the the project looks like. I think if you can click on this, this is actually a short, a very short animation. This is um, uh, this is uh, uh, as as though you were riding in the BRT one of the BRT uh, vehicles and approaching the station. You've, you've come through underneath the existing station out onto Daytran Boulevard and you've turned up the ramp. So you're always seeing the, the underside of this floating, of this floating canopy and the uh, trees, the spot diffusers you can see there, the, the rails to your right, the, the, the actual pedestrian area to your right, the station signage. Uh, this has all of the signage elements that the if you all remember from the pre when we presented to you that the, the other 14 stations in the system, it has all of the, the elements of signage that the, every other station has, the real-time video signage for the, that gives you information about the arrival and departure of trains, the station identification signage, which in this case we float on the, on the wall there. You can see to the right, they land south, south where it says, uh, emergency pylons, 
uh, all of the same uh, accoutrements that the other stations have uh, up and down the system ha happen here as well. Next, uh, next slide, please. Oh, sorry. You're seeing the short animation uh, twice. There we go. So, you know, we were we were asked to make sure that the, that that the, that this that this place made sense during the daytime and at night, and and that was as as comfortable as it could be in terms of uh, sun and rain. And so, here's a view of the of the project at night. This is what I meant to try to describe as uh, as the the underside of the floating canopy is is polycarbonate, translucent polycarbonate. Uh, it is actually the source of most of the light that is provided to the project. There are there is lighting underneath the seating benches, along the edges of the uh, pedestrian areas. There's also lighting in the center of those branches, so that the branches themselves can be somewhat illuminated. Uh, you know, we've actually talked to, about the, the ability to actually put in a uh, an LED uh, system where the light, the color of the light, can change. We're just showing it here in one in one format. Uh, there's a, a very, very resilient glazed brick material that is um, on, the, on the vertical walls that you can see there, black, white, gray, silver, that is consistent with the, the, new, uh, uh, the new paving pattern that is going to go throughout the entire remodeled uh, metro rail station and up and, and to the BRT level for, for continuity so that when a traveler moves from one mode to another, the station feels, the, you know, station feels consistent. Uh, next, uh, so this is looking as if you were looking over your shoulder as you depart the station. Uh, the shape of the, the canopy that is determined by that 45 degree angle, uh, mostly by the 45 degree angle of rain and, and, and sun protection, uh, which gives it, 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 is a, it is a slightly non-rectangular -rect shape. And, that, and that's what gives you that, that very slight undulation and, and the, and the uh, sharp the sharp corner that floats that floats here towards the left-hand front end of the drawing. Those blue elements there are the, are the signage and, and emergency pylons that I've, I've mentioned before. The station will provide Wi-Fi. It'll provide the ability to, to, to charge uh, devices, um, as well as th there's likely to be advertising in, this, in the station as well. Uh, next. Uh, you saw this image before. This is a, a daytime image at the arrival side. Uh, call it the northeast side of, of the station. You can see that what we did was to float the new canopy above the existing metro rail canopy that you can see on the right hand, floating into the right hand side of the of the drawing. Uh, next, here you are at a mid uh, mid station daytime. You, you can see now the spot diffusers that 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 move air down onto uh, onto the the pedestrian. They're 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 nozzles that can be directed very precisely at the positions that, where you want to move air to. And what's great about this is that the uh, the fans themselves are in the they're in the sandwich of the of the roof and and are, and are accessible and can be uh, they're out of the weather so to speak. So they'll last a long time and they're easy, more easily maintained. Uh, I think that might be it for the canopy portion. One, do we have one more slide? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, um, th this is a this is where we're connecting between uh, the metro rail. That's this is a slightly ramping portion that I mentioned to you here. You've got the the metro rail behind you, and you're moving. Imagine you're moving. You're walking down the ramp, and you're crossing over to the pedestrian area for the for the new BRT. So the can this is where the canopy is at its widest point, where it covers covers both uh, movements. So that's the continuity of movement that because that was one of my questions. So that's the connection from that's right. That's exactly right. If you let's say if you've come from the south of the county on a BRT and you want to keep going on the metro rail train, you would be you would have crossed uh, just down there at the bottom of the drawing, you would have crossed over from the from the new BRT platform and you'd be, you'd be moving up this very shallow ramp to the metro rail itself. So yes, this is exactly the link between the new and the old. And this is, is where is you, this you're looking really, south. This is looking is south. Yes, south? yes, it is. Yes. yes, it is. And that that element at the back, uh, back right behind the tree, the tree column there. That's the that's the driver's pavilion, there. And just before the driver's pavilion, you see a guy with a dark jacket on. Um, you, that's where you would turn left and cross to to get to the to the um, BRT platform itself. Um, I think that might be it. Do we have? Uh, yeah, I think Anna was going to talk about these. Th this is the, the metro rail uh, portion at the at the far northeast end of the station. 
Anna, I think you were going to take this, right? Yes. Yep. Um, Sorry, um, I was on mute. The, the render that we see right there is, um, is the portion of um, the metro rail, but in the north section, whenever you have the park and ride, as you can see, the car right there uh, is going to be the drop, the pickup, a drop, uh, drop off area. And that canopy is going to be covering that drop off area as well as the escalators as, as you approach the uh, metro rail station. Uh, that we also will have a canopy. Can you see that? Can you go for this for the next slide? Uh, as you can see on this um, render, is, uh, we're, we're seeing um, the canopy that will be right there um, on, on top of the platform um, with this canopy that we're providing uh, all the uh, metro rail station will be covered for, for any rain um, um, from the sun um, and we'll be protecting pedestrians. Can you go for the next slide? So in addition to all the canopy structures, there's also gonna be other minor improvements throughout the station um, that cr currently exists. Um, we have upgrades to facility technology such as LCD monitors for bus arrival information, um, bicycle facilities uh, such as bike racks, uh, lighting replacement, other landscape and hardscape elements like planters, um, and also a garden, which you'll see in some later on. Um, also wayfinding signage and a station identification pylon, which we'll see in a rendering later on, and a transit map for wayfinding. And in addition to that, there's going to be in tile that's going to be implemented for the new BRT platform. It's going to be replacing the existing tile at the station to provide continuity. And in addition to that, as Mike alluded to prior, there's going to be the spot diffusers on the BRT platform and other vertic vertical circulation elements um, are going to be either refurbished, provided like the new emergency egress stairways from the BRT platform and a new elevator which will connect the kiss and ride um, northern entrance directly to the metro rail platform so if you could go to the next slide i think we can better visualize some of these items so this is on the concourse level and as you can see the tile is different than um, currently exists today i think right now it's the like six inch by six inch tiles um, the yellow bollard fencing is going to be removed and replaced with the that the the metal fence um, if you can go to the next slide, there's another view, kind of, you're on the escalator coming down. And if you go to the next slide, you can see how the, a rendering of what it will look like on the Metro Rail platform, looking northbound. And as you can see in this, you can see the canopy extension. Um, you can see where the existing canopy terminates and where it will be continued to provide coverage for the full length of the platform. We can go to the next slide. And as you can see, there's the emergency egress stairways. It doesn't look like it in the rendering, but they will be enclosed and equipped with mechanic hardware for emergency egress purposes and the station pylon similar to those that will be um, constructed at the other BRT stations along the South Corridor BRT system. One additional thing, with, um, which I'm not sure if Mike mentioned or not, but um, the lighting throughout the project is meant to be in from my view. So all you see is actually the glow and the light that it forms, but you never see any fixtures. All fixtures are hidden from sight. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lincoln. That's a really good point. I failed to make that. Yeah, we we, we really wanted to make this uh, all, the, all the light to be uh, indirect, if I can use that use that word. And and also another good reason to do that is is just for the protection of the and the long you know maintenance, make it a little bit more maintenance free, and and weatherproof. Uh, and just to 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 uh, drive home the point that that uh, tower. I don't know how many of you were at, at the presentation we made for the south quarter but that tower you see in the right image is exactly uh the same tower that happens on the other the other stations so this the notion uh, county really this was actually programmatic this was not an idea that we came up with i, I wish i could say we did but uh, <laughs> it was really a programmatic the dtbw gave us this as a part of the as a part of the program that they they really wanted uh, the, an urban marker 
uh, for the system, uh, really the system as a whole. Um, and so this, this is, uh, other than the actual signage that says the words Dadeland South, this, there's a pylon just like this in all the stations up and down the, the system. And the, and the light in the, in the column can change. And that M is the, you know, is, a, is the updated brand standards for the, uh, for the, the countywide system. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, I can jump in on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, these are the th these are what we're calling the spot diffusers. Um, I don't want to. I want to make sure everyone understands this is not an air. This is not an exterior air conditioned space. It's a it's a um, uh, a ventilated space. Uh, we will be blowing air from fans that are in that sandwich of the of the canopy itself via these nozzles, which. Uh, can direct it. Um, the canopy is is roughly, on average, uh, just just shy of 16 feet above the surface. But we, we know that these we we we've selected a system and 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 tackle, I guess I would call it these these elements uh, that can get that air moving all the way down to the surface where the um the pedestrians are are, are moving. Again, this was a this was a requirement. Um, one of the things that um, DTPW wants to make sure. That they do in all these new well in all the, in all the stations really is is to make them as comfortable and as usable, as user friendly as as possible. So this is where this is where the system really comes from. Next slide, please. Um, and as you can see, so this is basically a view of the underside of the BRT bridge structure. So the platform would be directly above this. Um, it's really an open space that is functioning as an aesthetic element to um, kind of make it an enjoyable space to walk through. We have this Zen rock garden um, and some other seating areas. And if we go to the next slides, we can see different views of it. And this is the connector, this is the connector between the bike path, the, excuse me, the multi-use path that go, continues south for the whole for the whole uh, length of the of Dayland South quarter, excuse me, the Dayland quarter, uh, the South quarter, and at the north end it connects to the southern tip of the underline. Uh, so this is a key this is a key point at which uh, you know those two pedestrian slash bicycle you know areas link together. Um, landscaping on the on the uh, on the right hand edge here that helps create a you know create a softer edge to the to the uh, Call it the south, the south or southeast side of the of the whole station, and rock and the rock garden that uh, and and uh, ornamental ornamental walls on the on the west side as well of the existing building. Next slide, please. Just another view, uh, southbound. And next slide. Um. In addition to the, the bus rapid transit uh, platform that uh, is going to be provided for the project, uh, we're also going to be some, doing some milling or surfacing along um, the Dayland Boulevard as well as Daytrand Road uh, Drive. Um, we're also going to do milling or surfaces on the park and ride surface lot that will be on the north side of Dayland uh, Boulevard, uh, along the north side of the, um, the Metro Rail Station. Um, we will also will provide a bus only lane, um, just uh, a little, a little west of um, the the transit, uh, the metro rail along Dayland Boulevard for uh, buses waiting uh, before they can start the, the roads, the routes. Um, <laughs> the, the the area that we have for the the drop pickup and drop off area that we have currently. On on the uh, on the park and ride surface lot is going to be reconfigured, so we can uh, uh, we, through a runabout. So it's going to be an easy um, area to pick up and drop passengers. Um, slide please. As you can see in this slide, is, uh, this is re the reconfiguration of the uh, pick up and drop off area. Um, so it's going to be an easy uh, transition for pedestrians, um, or, or for cars dropping passengers, and uh, it's have access to the metro rail uh, through that elevator that you can see in the middle of, of the sketch. Um, 
Can you go to the next slide, please? And, and as you can see, that this is uh, the canopy that will be installed uh, at, at the runabout uh, that will be connecting this runabout with uh, the Metro Rail Station on the second level. As you can see, this will be this um, canopy will be covering not only the the drop drop off area but also the escalators that are connecting this area with the Metro Rail Station. Um, I think it's all the information that we have for you guys. Uh, I mean, if by name Michael or uh, Anna uh, would like to add anything uh, before we start with our open discussions. Um, I don't have anything else. I think we can just open it up. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you for the very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, we think we have an, another board member, uh, committee member on on the, the in the meeting, uh, Jackie. Wait, Jackie, are you there? Her, her name popped up, so um, I don't know if anyone else can see her. Jackie. There she is. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Can you uh, hear me now? Yes, and we can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Okay. Thanks for joining. So then we have seven members present, which is great. Um, just wanted to ask. I do question. not know why, but I cannot hear you. Oh, you can? Okay. Um, I can hear you. I, I can hear you clearly. It's hmm. some of us okay. can hear you. Okay, uh, just well, I'll start. Just one question. I want to just uh, ask, I guess, Oscar, can we get this um, presentation on the TPO website? We could, yeah, I could do that. I could probably add it under the TARC okay. discussion items. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Oscar, just to be clear, you didn't send us the presentation before, right? Beforehand. I I didn't miss it. Correct. Before. Yeah. Correct. Neither no the Golden Glaze nor this one. They were huge files and we got them sort of late. So they didn't want okay. to steal away the thunder from TC Fidelity and the consultants. So here we are. Okay. Well that's fine. Just so it's you know available to the public, you know, whoever has any um uh questions on um on it. Um Debbie, do you want to start with any questions? I'll just go down the list. Is she still there? Sorry, I was muted. I was having okay. a conversation with myself. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, first ask about the landscaping. Um, it was hard to tell what it was. If you if you've got information or details on what the landscaping plan is, what what type of uh, what type of landscaping material is going to be used? So, um, because this is a design build project, we don't actually dictate which specific um, plant uh, material we use. Um, but that is all that, uh, specified in the de design criteria package. Um, for under, there's going to be areas underneath within the station that you know will need to be shade tolerant, but um, we don't have any specific plants that are going to be required. Low, easy maintenance, um, not needing irrigation systems, aesthetically pleasing. Um, does that answer your question? Florida friendly, water yes. tolerant. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and the, my next question is the, the bike facilities, uh, what you said, bike racks, um, that's it. It's just racks. You're going to have any other like bike storage or anything like that? Um, at this, uh, at this point, no, um, we do have only have the bike racks located within the paid area of the station. And there are Last is the uh, the connection 
with the underline on one side and the shared use path on the on the other side. Um, I mean, it, it looked very nice, but you could have uh, people bike riding through there uh, coming from the underline going very quickly. How, where do they go so they don't interfere with the pedestrians at the station? Is there a separate path? No, we, we conducted a site visit with the underlying PM and manager, and um, we tried to separate the two, but however, due to site constraints, um, we're going to have to keep it as it is today, where um, the bicyclists are going to need to dismount and push their bikes through the station. Oh, wow. That area in order to connect to the south, the bike path adjacent to the, the South Day Trend. Yeah, that's very, that's very awkward for bike riders. That whole station is very awkward. Okay. Right. Has this gone to BPAC yet? The, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee? Yes, we are going to be presenting to them in October. Okay. So we're going to get their input. All right. Appreciate the comments. That's it for, that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roy? Yeah, I wasn't sure if we saw an estimated cost. On the cost of undergoing yeah, our some, budget. I don't know. Yeah, currently, that. currently, current. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, currently, okay. it, it's undergoing. So we're we're working on that number. Um, um, I mean, right now, uh, again, this is a rough number. We're around 65 million, but again, we're we're working toward toward a, a new number. Um, so it's it's work in progress. Sixty-five million. Okay. Yep. That's including that. That's including the remodeling of the existing station, the improvements at the north end of the existing station, and the new and the new ramp and canopy. Yes, everything, everything. And and the existing roads, right? The. Uh, Correct. Uh, All the road improvements, uh, signalization. Yes. Okay. All package, everything. <laughs> exactly. All right, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, Jackie, could you chime in if, if you're available? I think she's having I understand it, Jackie. Yeah, she is. So come back around to her. Okay, yeah, no, I can't hear you, Jackie. <laughs> If, if Jackie, if you want to type a question or two or a comment, then just type it and I'll, I'll read it, okay? If you're still having difficulty. Um, okay, so at Adnab, do you have any comments, please? No comment for uh, the moment. I lost connection for a little while there. So okay. I missed a question or the other thing, but no comment for now. All right, thank you. Uh, Steve? Um, yeah, we're. we're was this going on the existing footprint of um, of what's there now, or are you taking on any other new land? No, this will all be constructed within the county's right of way. That's being used at this point? No, the BRT bridge is going to extend over Daytron and, and will end up tying into the transit way. So there will be, I don't know if you will to um, the, about the existing uh, bridge um, that's going to be going from uh, Dayland Boulevard to connect to the transit way over Daytran is, is, is going to be built on top of the existing uh, bus station that you have on the, on the, on the east side of the, of the, the Metro Rail Terminal. So I mean, before you have buses there, you're not gonna be able to have that. The only thing is gonna be the ramp with the platform for for the um, the bus rapid um, transit in this case. Over the right of way, there'll be new structure, but the existing is just to the east. They're not by. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again, please? The existing businesses just to the east. Are they being affected by this? Uh, no, the, the business now. We're, we're doing the, um, the proposed bridge is gonna be more or less a foot away from, from the, the railway line. So whatever we're building is within um, uh, 
a Miami Dade County um, right away. And it's within the transit way right of way. Correct. And now, in the discussion of what's going for the ground level walkway connection from what's north of you to what's south of you, we all are aware that what's north of you, a lot of uh, a lot of people have put a lot of thought into what would go into a, a pathway, and this is obviously a sixty million plus property, and I would think that we want to have that same co coercion between what's happening just to the north and through this site. Like the, the fact that we're gonna put in a rock garden and tell people to stop and walk, I, I find that to be very like disconnected, that there needs to be some more thought and minds better than me on this, but it just seems like the continuity of that whole system should be uh, money is being spent here and it could be spent in a wiser way than a rock garden that would send, tell people, you know, to get off your bike and push. I don't think that will fly very well with, with types of people we're trying to, uh, to get, are using those facilities. And a lot of money is being spent on that. All right. And then the other thing would, was um, you did address lighting and I'm a big lighting nut. So I like that about um your all being brought in from I'm not seeing stuff. Uh, uh the signage you brought in from bringing all the what's existing and tying it through so um i feel you're addressing that um but i really think and the thought about the foot trap <coughs> bottom that needs an improved plan. And that's that's my input. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Richard. I don't have anything at this time. All right, okay. So now I think we could jump back to Jackie. Jackie, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I, got, I was muted. Um, can you hear me now? Yep, great, yes. thank you. Okay, <laughs> perfect. It only took half an hour. Exactly, um, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I don't have any question at this point that I can think of. I had one, but it was answered. <clears throat> Steve okay. addressed it in his question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so last but not the least, I guess. Uh, um, <clears throat> So I, I concur with the bike connectivity uh, comment. Um, we really need to do make sure we do a bang up job connecting this site to to the north northeast to the to the uh, um, <coughs> the underline. Um, is the canopy what what will be considered the art and public places places component or? Uh, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you thinking it might be, but, but it's not. It's not. There's a. But in addition to the, you know, the, the, the treatment of the under the, the, the underlying connected um, part of the project, there. Help me make make sure I'm not uh, saying anything incorrect, Anna and and Luis. But there will be an art and public places program component to this project, and that's that's you know, that's made clear in the uh, written portion of the of the criteria package. So artists will be brought in just as they will in the other, in the other uh, stations down the system. Um, we, we can, uh, you know, we can, I think we hope to be able to influence, you know, maybe some of the locations where some of the artists might work, but there is definitely an art and public places component to this. The, the canopy is not currently uh, uh, being used for that, but it wouldn't be beyond the realm of, you know, possibility that some artists might come in and say, Hey, I want to, I want to put an image on the underside of the canopy or something, and we, you know, when and the the ultimate design builder and DTPW could work together to make that possible if they if they had a convincing argument or or something like that. Uh, just just like art and public places, uh, things have happened with flooring and the airport and and with right. paving and 
other places. But right now, it's uh, it's part of the it's part of the main it's part of the main budget and main scope of the project. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so, I, I actually I was a project manager for the South Corridor, so I'm very familiar with what's going on here. So, I, I think a general question. Um, is this being, I don't know what the word is, future-proofed? When we hit the 30,000 passenger mark um, and we want to put um, rail, you know, heading south from here, um, the train will not be able to just keep on going on the tracks because the tracks are not aligned. I mean, the, the metro rail tracks and the proposed busway, they're not aligned. So. How, how do we future proof this thing to make that, you know, a seamless, uh, you know, one seamless ride or camera? We're going to reverse the tracks. Um, I think that with the, in order to integrate the metro rail operation, should they ever come to fruition, the tracks that are, the tail tracks that are currently, that currently exist south of the station would end up being utilized. So there would be seamless transfer and actually there wouldn't be any transfer. Um, it would just right. automatically integrate into the into the tail track. So it's not at this location. It's the tracks go down to ground level uh, several blocks, south, a couple blocks south. So that would be where the the, um, the continuation, I guess, would take place. So when then what would happen to this station we're building for $60 million, $65 million? You know, I guess, I mean, that's where I'm going. So yeah so the tracks do come down to ground level far you know south of, of this area um you know that's what i'm just thinking of how this all would work in the future so right and i think that the county has other um bus rapid transit corridors planned there might be you know growth in different areas that might um integrate brt operations that the platform may be able to be utilized for in the future. Yeah, I just want us to think into the future when this does happen. Um, you know, we're spending a lot of money um, to abandon it if the rail comes, you know, to fruition. So um, just wanted to bring that up. Um, so let's see. I, I really, you know, I, I agree with the bike uh, connectivity comment. We, you know, we, um, We've spoken about the art component. Um, I believe when the design, this is my opinion, you know, when the design builder is, is uh, chosen and they're at some point in, in their um, planning uh, process, I, I would like to see them come back so we can get a better feel of what, um, what the actual plans are going to be, you know, that when they all get flushed out. Um, Right, and that is part of the design, that's part of the narrative document that will require the design build firm once they're selected to um, present to, to TARC. Okay, great. So, Told about the planting sites would be, like all the spots where, where you would, would see like, we'll, we'll plant something here, plant something there. Well, right, it's gonna be our standard. I, you know, I, I think they need to work on the bike connectivity, you know, get the plans flushed out, um, what they're actually building. The bike connectivity, artwork, lighting signage, um, and any anything else you all feel that need need you know that we need to look at. So, was there anything else you think after bike connectivity, art, lighting, signage, landscaping? Landscape, right? Right. Okay. But as you said, I, I think I guess it was Anna. You said you it's in the narrative that they would have to present, you know, the docs to us again uh, when you when you choose a design builder and they have the, you know, better handle on, plan, on the plans. Um, it's a question in reference to, you mentioned about the bike connectivity between the um, shared use path and underlying project. Um, do you want us to do it under this project or, or, or we want to tell the design build firm to try to provide that for, for um, the project? Well, I mean, what you're proposing, what you've told us is you got to get off your bike and walk. That's not going to work, right? So you have to integrate whatever you're doing 
under under Dalen Space Dalen South, you have to better integrate it to what what's happening to the north. Um, we try we try to to see um, if that, if that was feasible. Uh, we have a field review with uh, Irene to try to see if we can accommodate that connectivity. Um, the the issue that we have is that in the area where we can provide a, a bike lane or, 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 or a share use path in this case, uh, we have in between the existing structures that is part of the Metro Rail and the structure that we're proposing, in this case, the bridge, um, there is not much room in the difference to that. There will be like more or less like a six to seven feet in between those two structures. So it's, it's really hard to accommodate um, the pedestrian walkway as well as a, a shared use path for bikes. And um, you know, that, that was that was the idea, try to accommodate both of them, but unfortunately at this area it's like, you know, it's like a pinch point that is 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 hard to to be able to accommodate um, both paths together. I mean, uh, and we don't want the bike uh, try to be driving through through this area and, and have also pedestrian walking. No, but I mean, we're spending how much money on the underline and to peer it out, you know, to have like a dead end and not usable, you know, when it can connect to the the transit way path to the south. I mean, that's not in our mind, on my mind, reasonable, you know, reasonable answer. We need we need to have that, you know, good connectivity somehow. I'm still upset over the the the, the chain link, the bridge over um, what is it eight. Uh, Oh yeah, over the eight, eight seventy-eight or whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, eight seventy-eight. That's still it's just, yeah. <laughs> sticking in. <laughs> yeah, that was one of our <laughs> very bad uh, decisions <laughs> way back when. So yeah, whatever we need to do, um, we need to do it right. So it seems, it, it seems like we're going to have the same situation if we don't uh, find a way to solve that uh, problem with the bike path. Right, right. No, it was, yeah. Right, well, yeah. well, so, is it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Alex. No, 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 no I'm that's, saying, say my piece, that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I meant Alex Corgis well, as in the, the other know? Alex, I'm no, sorry. No, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I was gonna add on to it yet. Obviously, we don't have the design build firm on board yet, but that that's one of the, uh, one of the, 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 the issues that we'll definitely discuss with them to see if they have any other ideas, any other um, uh, thoughts in order to make that connectivity work. So we'll, we'll definitely work with them once we get, once we get them on board. Right. I, I think we're just telling you what you're going to hear in BPAC hopefully, and you're going to get skewered there if you don't come up with a, a good answer, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if what you need is more space, why don't you uh, split the path and let let the bikes go along with the bus up and over on the bridge? So a wider path for the bridge for them, and then you you create that continuity connectivity. I don't know, sixty five lot to not have that figured out before you get started. I agree. I, I, I know. there there has to be a way, and it's worth right. it. It has to be it, so. and, and I'll probably be at the BPAC meeting. Okay, good. To, to comment. Good. <laughs> well, as Anna said, we'll revisit it, and we'll make and we'll make sure it gets into into the criteria in a way that it's it's uh, some some solution is demanded of the uh, design builders. Right. Perfect. Um, any any other comments from um, the committee? No. Okay, hearing none, um, I'd like to entertain a motion. Would anyone like to make a motion to accept um, this proposal and with any uh, comments, conditions that you'd like to add on besides them coming back? Um, anyone want to take a stab at it? Uh, that's right up Steve's alley. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll take a stab. Okay, perfect. Good. Back to that. Um, and we'd like, hopefully, that you can address the issues that we brought up 
um, on so far. Um, I think we touched on a lot of key elements that um, our committee where that comes. A lot of times you get too far along and it's hard to put it in later. So uh, trying to address it now, I think works works well. Uh, do I need to go over the elements? Can we go with the elements that were listed by Alex uh, a few minutes ago? I mean, why don't you say that? Do you, have, do, you do you write them down, or I could list them, or if you would for me then? Okay. So basically to, you know, focus on the bike connectivity, uh, the art in public places, we'd like to see the uh, lighting and lighting and signage and also landscaping. You know, when, once you get the design builder in place, you'll, you know, flush those all out. But that, those are items that are very important to us. And I would make that as a motion. Thank you. And I need a second. Second. Debbie. Okay. Second by Debbie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Second. None opposed? <clears throat> okay, thank you. So um, we'll see this plan hopefully, I guess, what, in a year, year and a half? Can I ask a yeah, question? Yeah, about, yeah, um, we most likely uh, this will be advertised. So uh, uh, we should have a design bill firm in about a year. So okay. by then we could coordinate and then we could set up another meeting with you guys. Perfect. Right. right. So just for, just for confirmation, all those issues that need to be uh, resolved are going to be, um, need to be integrated into the design build firm's presentation. We're not yes. going to represent. Correct. correct. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for participating. Um, going to do <coughs> was someone saying something? It was background. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your input. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, so, okay. So, with that, we'll move on to the information items. And I'm going to call Sandra Bello up for to talk about, oh, not call her up. <laughs> You're sitting somewhere, I'm sure. Um, Golden Glades Multimodal Transportation Facility. Um, we were just requested um, basically an update and some uh, renderings or, or, or photos of what they're proposing. You know, just we had some questions. So um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Sandra. So we presented the last time. There's been no changes since our last presentation. What we submitted um, to Oscar was the plans, the uh, site plans for all the questions that you guys had in our last meeting. Um, and I'm just here to answer any general questions. Um, I'm the community outreach specialist, so I'm not um, versed in the technical side. Um, we didn't have the engineers available, but uh, we submitted those documents to you guys so that you could take a look at the plans. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, everyone, you know, jump in. Um, I know the one issue was the connectivity to tri rail, correct? That wasn't, yeah, that was an issue that was brought up, and we included that in. Um, if you look at the uh, item one, and even item two um, shows the canopy coverage. So you can see here um, where the canopies are located. It's easier to see it if in the item number two because it's highlighted in pink. Um, what are we What are we looking at? Which slide? I don't know what slide it is. It's it. It was uh, Oscar. It was item two, number two um, that we included in the email. Let me see if yes, there's a name uh, for the document. Right. There's this, all the slides are there, it's just a. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably the, it looks like it's the next slide, this slide. That? There you go. Uh huh, that, that's it. So there you can see it, the um, pedestrian canopies and shared use paths. 
from Tri-Rail, which is at the west end of the site plant, all the way throughout the whole entire facility. So in the middle, you're looking at the bus canopy. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's like a U shape. So that's right. the, bus, the bus canopy um, in the middle, the bus hub. And then surrounding that is all the areas in pink, which are the canopies and shared use paths for pedestrians to get between tri-rail throughout the facility to the buses. Except the train station is on the other side of State Road 9. No, it's, it's all on the same side. It's all within the same facility. So there's, there's an east lot and there's a west lot. This is all within the west lot. So they don't have to cross the road or anything like that. There's no, I, but to get to the train station, the train station itself is on the other side of State Road 9. Right, but there's a pedestrian pathway. So you have, we're going to have a new, a new bridge. Um, it, that's how it is exi existing. So that nothing changes. Yeah. Well, that was the point was that we said that this whole big investment here, and then we stopped right at that crosswalk and address updating anything to the train station. I mean, the, the purpose is for people to use the train and this park and ride. And so if we don't address that at this time, when does it, I mean, you mean later we got to come up with another funding and stuff to deal with addressing a station that was built, I don't even know how long ago. Do you? When the last time that station was addressed? I don't, I don't. And, and this any million dollar project that speaks to the whole transportation aspect. And, and like you're saying, no, we're, we're connected, but you connected to an old footbridge and didn't, you know, are we even gonna paint it or, or put signs? No, no. Well, the pedestrian this? bridge will be, it's not the existing pedestrian bridge, it's going to be a brand, brand new bridge, but the tri-rail platform will remain the same. Nothing has changed from that. And, I, and that was basically the concern that, uh, we, yeah, that was basically but, the concern that we are, you know, attaching a brand new facility to an old one that actually needs to be refurbished or rebuilt itself. Right. The refurbishment of the existing bridge was our issue. Right. Well, and the station itself, too. I mean, the sign's going to match over there by the tri-rail station the, with the rest of the place when this is all done? It, it's my understanding that there's no updates to, to the tri-rail station itself. It's separate. So no, it I, will I, not be addressed as part of this project. We um, have a place like this from the very beginning and it's terrible. It's all one property and we should consider it as well. Right, I mean, that was our, our Okay. Um, Jackie has a question or a comment. Could you unmute her, please? Jackie? Oh, thank you. Oh, good. You're there. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I, 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 I know that we, we all addressed that before, but I'm very concerned because I, I know for sure that one of the comments that we made the last meeting we had was to have that addressed. So the fact that we have this meeting and it comes back with the the concerns not addressed um, is is a concern to me because I see the same thing that happened on State Road 878 happening again, and and that that's very frustrating at this point. Right. Um, yes, yeah, Sandra. What kind of throwing you under the bus. I know it's not you and I don't, I don't know, you know, what happened, but there were specific questions and comments we had and that's why, what, two, a couple months ago, I guess, right? Um, so that- I understand the concerns, but the, you know, there hasn't been any changes. The purpose of my, my role here is just to provide the plans 
that are existing, um, which there were concerns about uh, the pedestrian walkways and the connectivity. Um, and so everybody, everything remains the same. The only thing that we are showing to you are the plans. So nothing has changed. So I understand that there's concerns. I, we're fully aware of that. Um, but there has been no updates to that. So again, I'm here to answer any general questions. Um, and I will most certainly bring the concerns back to the project team um, that, you know, you guys still have the same concerns about the connectivity and the tri-rail and the, the platform being, you know, the same platform. Um, the bridge, the, the bridge yeah, was the, the bridge. issue. The bridge, a, a new portion and an old portion, and if the old, if not, it's not refurbished, then it's going to look, it's not going to look very good. So we were just, you know, uh, stating in our last meeting when we heard this to you know have a focus on that connectivity just to make it a better looking um you know uh, pedestrian bridge so but yeah you know, oscar i'm kind of surprised why are they for us if they didn't answer the questions or you know address our comments um yeah they did they did send quite a few drawings i think maybe we could look at the other ones maybe i, I could have sworn i saw one that was more specific to the pedestrian bridge well, yeah i did see it. Of, yeah i mean that's see, you know, we don't need yeah. yeah we don't need to see these or you know like that that's this there, stuff right that's uh, that's the existing one right mm -hmm. but that, <clears throat> that connection was important to us Yeah, so the pedestrian bridge that will be new will be from the parking garage to the existing um, connection, which I, I understand that that's, that's the concern there. Right, so we need you all to go back and address our common our concerns about that connection and what you can do to pretty up the existing pedestrian bridge. You know, I mean, paint it, like Steve said, someone said paint it, do something, or not, someone said. You know, do I mean, something. I'll bring it back to the team again, but as of right now, there hasn't been any update to the plan. Lighting in this signage. I'm sorry, Steve. I said, and the signage should be all the same. Like all, unless you're being told no, that'll come through as an. But otherwise, you're. You came back to us today without addressing any of our looking for us. Give you permission or approval? I, I, I'm, sure. no, uh, I'm, sure. I'm just here to answer any general questions. Uh, well, that, just the plan, uh, the site. Came back before our committee. You're taking our time. We're sitting here, a bunch of us volunteers. Um, and, and you well, Oscar, Oscar asked me to be here. <laughs> So I, we came as, as you know, to, to provide uh, general information. I, we didn't ask, you know, to, to be here today. It, Oscar asked us, me to be here. Um, yeah, no, so I understand that there's still concerns, but you know, I, 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 there was a disclaimer before I attended that I'm here to add, answer any general questions and that we provided, um, you know, the, the plans that, that were requested. Now, as far as the concerns of the pedestrian bridge, nothing has been updated for that. So, I will I'll bring work it with Sandra and the, I'll work with Sandra and the FDOT team to make sure that everything, really, the main focus and the concerns of TARC is really on the pedestrian. But everything else looks pretty good. It's that connection from tri-rail to this new facility that seems to be uh, left behind, for right. lack of a better term. So, so I will, um, I, I'll make sure that I would encourage you, Oscar, to just, you know, write to us electronically, write, write an email, you know, with the concerns, and I will send it back to the team again, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll try that tactic. Okay. okay. We'll make it a, an action, or uh, actually a, an information item, we'll add it to the next agenda. And we yeah, focus so, on- Yeah, I mean, yeah, which is what I had suggested before. So I would just, you know, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, the FDOT DOT team is not available. It's only the right. public outreach person that 
I mean, like, just make sure when we schedule this again, make sure they're, you know, just talking to us about that. I, I, were there any other issues that we needed, you know, we wanted to see? Or was that the, the main concern? I mean, everything else I thought was, you know, they were on the right path. Um, can, <clears throat> can, can you hear me? Good. It's, it's just a bridge that was a concern. So at that point, uh, if we can find, like we say, for our next meeting, at least a stakeholder who can uh, be concerned with us and address what we're asking them to do. Uh, short of asking Sandra to go and do that for us again. But I guess that's what we need to do. Find the right person that can help with that. Okay. okay. Um, Jackie, did you have a comment or question? Yes, I did. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. I I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> um, I I I Sandra, I I really hate to to have to dump this on you, and and I understand that you only the messenger. Um, however, it, it if you could. Um, and I don't know if Oscar can assist in that. Take a look at the comments that we had the last time. And when you go back to the, to the design team, you probably want to um, <clears throat> actually um, attach that together in that email um, um, and, 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 and request, if, if, for lack of a better word, that um, those comments be be addressed because these were our concern even i mean we did we did mention that and 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 it was the concern not even from one of us for all of us actually so it, it's very important to us that that this gets to be to be addressed and 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 taken into consideration if you don't mind so yeah just on that point um actually you know, we heard this, um, the meeting, you know, we heard this item on June 29th. So Sandra, if you have, if you did get the agenda package, um, right, at the, right at the top of page three in the minutes, it talks, you know, that our concerns were centered around the tri-rail connection. So, um, so anyway, so that, that's in the minutes for anyone to look at. Um, and, and I'll bring it back to the team. And I, I believe that there was other items um, that we took note of uh, per, pertaining to the pedestrian canopies um, and the shared use walkways. So we did provide that in that email. Right. Okay. Um, so, any other comments on this before we move on? Um, I, I also know that we, we had um, a question, or maybe I had a question or concern in reference to the entrance from, I think, um, the expressway, um, because I think there is a connecting ramp <clears throat> that was supposed to go through um, from, if I'm not mistaken, on eastbound that shows the connect the, the entrance into the lot from the eastbound. And there was also a crosswalk. About, are you talking about State Road 9 or State Road 7? Yes. No, State Road 9. And okay, I don't so, know if that was addressed. So in item number two, um, and, and Oscar, I don't know if maybe you want to forward this email to them so that they can take a look. Um, uh, in the site plan, it, it addresses that. That only adds, like, the owner's brother. I'm sorry? Do you happen to have a, um, um, a, a slide on, on that address that? By any chance? Uh, yeah, it, on number two, there was uh, item number two that we were referring to earlier, where it shows the pink areas. It addresses the, um, the pedestrian connectivity from State Road 7 all the way to State Road 9. And you can see the, the site plans. Okay, I see the site plan. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, so technically the entrance to the parking lot is through the connector road, not not through the um, Straightwood 9. Correct? Well, yes, it, it, uh, that con the connector road connects from between State Road 9 to State Road 7. Okay. Okay. And and where is the pedestrian um, crosswalk on that one? Right next to, there's like a, a light pink area that says SUP. It says um, high pylon signal that's closest to um, State Road 9. It's not very clear there, though. It's not very clear on that. Say that on again. That it looks like oh, the pedestrian. Okay. Yeah, it's not very clear here, so I'll I'll, um, I'll ask them to provide a clearer um, view of that pedestrian uh, crosswalk. Okay. okay. Thank thank you. No problem. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Um, so you. Oscar and Sandra, so you know what you need to do, I guess, right? <coughs> I'll go ahead and forward Sandra's email to how she responds to all the concerns to all the TARC members. And hopefully we'll get, if we get more details on that bridge, we'll make it part of the information item for the next meeting and make sure the FQT <coughs> team is able to respond. Right. Okay. That sounds uh, like a plan. All right. Thank you very much, Sandra. No problem. Okay, so let's move on to the second information item, item B. Um, I guess I'll turn it over to you, Oscar. As we, we show every time, okay. yeah, as, as we show in every meeting, we pretty much just bring up the attendance sheet. And we haven't been had a very active year. I mean, with the, the COVID and really no projects in line, we did have our TAP rankings done, and then we had our meeting in June. And we did some, uh, and we did the board members, and of course, uh, we saw the Golden Glades on late June again for like the fifth time in two years, and yep. we still obviously not resolved everything. Right. And today was a, a new project for a change, which is nice. So yep. this is essentially this is the attendance sheet for everyone. Okay. And I know I don't know what um, Juan Crespi. I haven't heard from him and some others. So we may have to revisit this because in the bylaws, if you miss so many meet meetings, you pretty much are automatically removed. Right. So and that's so something the, we need to revisit. Right. So what? I, so I could just tell the committee what I I, I asked Oscar to do. I, mean, I think we just needed. Uh, you know, send uh, want a uh, want a just a letter, a courtesy letter, asking you know his intentions if he wants to remain on on the committee or not, and hopefully he'll get back to us and either say yes, I'm still interested, or I'd I'd like to you know resign. So then uh, Commissioner Sosa, who appointed him, could you know appoint hopefully someone else. So, um, but I just think we do, just need to do that you know a, a courtesy letter to him. So. Uh, all right. Uh, and any other the next. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we can move on to and that same courtesy letter. We probably have to revisit this and look at everyone who 
falls that, into that I mean, category. Yeah. That that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. Right. I mean, he was just a member for so long, and then he's you know, because of what happened, he dropped off the face of the earth, basically. So I mean, yeah, it's not just the letter to him. It would be you know used for others too, in the future. So. Yeah. Um, all right. On that note, I will move on to member reports. Does any member have anything of interest to the committee to talk about? I have some I'd like to mention. Um, I saw a video about the 395, 836, I-95 project where it shows the finished bridge and the flyover. A very interesting video if you haven't seen it should try to get your hands on. I think I picked it up off the TARC uh, flyer that I got about 10 days ago. So okay. that was, um, another thing is I was taking a trip to the West Coast this weekend and I-75 where it connects to 595, but really it's still 75 when you go West there. So okay. where five meets 75 there, I took that corridor. And man, the landscape out there is just, beautiful i i mean i wish we could that's a book to say where it's done right so anytime you're out there check that out just a comment right. I would. Right. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, anyone else i just i just can you hear me yep okay great i just have a question and i know that um steve had been following this very closely Whatever happened to the lighting on 836 overpass to 826? Because um, I, I've driven it the other day and, and there was nothing there. Sometimes I, dr I drive it and we have like a, a, a few, not all the lights up. And sometimes it's totally gone. So I don't know who, who is... Um, Who's responsible for, for that? Hey, Jackie, this is Oscar. I remember researching that back when Tark had made those concerns. And it's, it's an intersection you know, between FDOT mostly and 836, but it's really uh, the expressway authority that handles that. And when I spoke to them about it a year and a half ago, their engineer said that there, those lights were low bid, essentially. And they had issues with warranty, and they were going to get them replaced. <clears throat> then, what happened was uh, the governor was pretty much going to remove the expressway authority completely from in ex from existence, and that took several months, so if not a year, to finally be resolved. So I think that just. Uh, so I'll go ahead and see. Uh, I'll follow up with that. That's so. That's pretty much the history behind it. Right. It's the expressway authority. Uh, under their purview, it was a warranty issue, and then they were almost absolved completely. So now they're back on track, and they uh, I'll reach out to them again, see if I can get a better answer from them this time. All right, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. I, I comment, I have seen them come back on, and not, it didn't seem like it turned everyone back on, but we did have colored lights working in there again, but they're just not always on. So I don't know what the plan is or how they work, but I have seen them working recently. Okay. All right, anyone else? Okay, hearing none. Uh, uh, Oscar, do you have anything to report? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Their prospectus was re-looked at, and the which one, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, um, we're going to re-look at the bylaws for TARC. We have to do that. We should do that on a regular basis, and we're trying to be consistent with all the other advisory committees, so there'll probably be some changes, and because of this virtual world now that we're in, we conflict with uh, CTAC meetings, so, and, and it's hard to have, we can't really have two virtual meetings at the same time because of the bandwidth and the consultant we have on board and what have you. So we may move our TARC meetings, like we'll keep them on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. We may make them the second or third Wednesday of the month. So we're working on that and hopefully we'll, we'll, do, we'll revisit the bylaws and make that part of the bylaws. 
so we don't have any conflicts. Hopefully we'll be getting back to the office in the next few months and we won't have that issue, but for the future, it's some, and it's, it helps too. So maybe a citizen wants to attend both our meetings and they can't. So that's the one thing we'll be looking at shortly. Okay. And that's all I have for staff reports. All right, uh, thank you. Um, so we have a, uh, under new business, uh, we have, um, I guess, the October 21, if we have an item, or do we have an item, Oscar? I think we had talked about that. Yes, yes, and if you notice, we already had, uh, yeah, we did talk about it. We're doing, we're doing a case-by-case -case basis. Obviously, October 21 is not the first Wednesday of the month, so uh, it's actually the third Wednesday of the month. And we do have an item. It's going to be uh, the underline phase two. Great. And then in November, hopefully, we'll have uh, the under deck, which has made quite a bit of progress in, in talking to the city of Miami. Because of the COVID, they've been able to do a lot of better maintenance of traffic and advance the signature bridge and the uh, workings underneath. So hopefully, we'll get back on a roll and there'll be projects coming our way. Great. OK. Thank you. Um... Under public comment, Roman numeral six. Um, I don't know if we have any uh, speakers or, or anyone from the public, um, but if there is, does anyone uh, want to speak? Yeah, I, I don't see anyone from the public on, on the, the participants list. So uh, with that, um, next item, adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Some Second. Second. And who seconded that? I like I Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Okay, great. All right. So the meeting is now adjourned at 5:32. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.